Okay, so for this exercise, um, we'll start with creating the repository. So I'll be naming naming it as this. Then I'll add a readme file and the git uh, git ignore so that it will have like a base git ignore thing um, file. We will go for node. And I'll just pick Apache License 2.0. Uh, there's no particular reason why I pick it. It's just because I'm I'm used to it now instead of using MIT and among other things. So because I have Gitpod installed on my um my items or I mean my extensions here, I can click on Gitpod so that I can have access to it. So let's wait for it to run. And so usually if I'm going to just uh, do this alone, I would just start coding from here. But just for the sake of like making sure that everything is um, is done by by practice, we we will start by planning out what we will need to do. So first things first, uh, want to create an issue. Oops, sorry. Uh, we want to create the issue for this um, for this repository. So, what's an issue? It's a way for tracking um, things that you want to do. So let's just say I want to create um, 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 like plan out that uh, set up um, our um, code base so I just want to have um, uh, add a package JSON using npm in it that's that's the plan that I'm uh, going to do and then also maybe um, install um, what do I need to install? Let me just check. Maybe install um, linting such as um, semi-standard. So uh, this, so in, in essence, um, oops. This will help us uh, make sure our code is um, follows some standard. And um, I would also add some so install several several dev dependencies for semi standard. So I'm going to do this. Submit an issue. Once I have submitted an issue, I could see here there's this um I'm going to make it a little bit big so that you guys can see um, development create a branch for this issue so this is a good practice where you don't want to push to the main branch um, you want you don't want to like push everything on the main branch um, immediately you want to create a branch or a sub branch um, a branch from the main so that um, you don't mess up the the main branch while while coding so 
um, so create a branch and we just copy this so once you have copied this we paste it here and we have so my, you, you will see that uh, it changes from main to one set up our code base so now we get we will do the tasks uh, at hand the good thing here is because i sort of have github in this um i don't know if yeah it it would show up here what the issue is on on the the github part of this uh, VS code, which you can sort of track. Um, but uh, because we also have it here, we will be able to do it as well. So first things first, we need to start with npm init. So um, we want to name it this way. Um, I always start with 00. Point, uh, 0. 0. 0.1. Um, using the semver um i'll put it on the description on what semver is so that you can have a read on it um so this is uh, a to do app so we'll be because we'll be creating a to do app so this and my plan is not to use index.js but the entry point would be um, src index.js um, and then the test command is um, we'll we'll just leave it as is for now. And because it follows the Git repository, this will be the Git repository. Keywords is Node.js web server um, and my name. And because it's Apache 2.0 that we have uh, picked so yes and that will have this package JSON which uh, we have this uh, basic kind of um, uh, thing so yeah uh, basic um, configuration in essence so that is done and the next thing that we will do is semi-standard. So we will install save dev semi-standard. Now with semi-standard, I will, um, I have my notes here. So you don't sort of have to worry about it. Um, I, I, I mean, it's something that I already did before. So um, you will be able to copy it if you look at the screen but I'll also provide um, just um, uh, notes so that you'll be able to um, copy it in, in essence so um, once you have this semi-standard the thing with semi-standard is um, let's say I create a file, let's say index, index.js, and then I did this, x equals 5, without the semicolon. If I run semi-standard, semi-standard, it will return an error showing what are the things that we need to fix to make it uh, have a uh, follow a standard so we are using the standard um, standard JS with a semicolon so you I will also post it on the description or uh, um, so that you can read about the rules on how to code using standard JS um, but usually you will see like X is not is assigned but a value uh, assign the value but never been used so that means I should use this or else this is like an extra code that is lying around um, that you can delete the other is new line required at the end of the file so usually it's a practice so if I run it again um, now that is 
um, happening. Um, and then the missing semicolon because we are using the semi-standard version, not the standard. So if I run this, um, that is what is left. Anyway, so uh, uh, that is how it is being run. But we will add additional um, items here um, that will help us with um, making sure that our code is clean. So first things first, we will install a dish. Uh, we will add um, a configuration in semi standard. So the configuration would be semi standard. I'll, I'll put it at the bottom so that it's going to be. Um, you know that it's going to be there. Standard. First things first is plugins. And then the parser. Um, and then the environment. And maybe... Um, what else um, we will add globals so for now this is going to be the configuration and one thing that we will add is um, this one Babel ESLint parser because I, we have added that we will need to install it as well Once that is done, we will also add these things. Uh, standard, promise, mocha, which is for testing, um, and chai expect, which is also for testing. Um, so we'll also add HTML here. Because we will be coding HTML as well within JavaScript. So for later on in our series. So given that, we'll need to install. Um, to make it easier for us, we'll, we, we need to... Um, we can add this on our dev dependencies. So I added ESLint config standard, ESLint plugin chai, uh, chai expect, ESLint HTML. Oops, sorry, that should be this one, and then ESLint Mocha, and lastly is. Um, um, SLN plugin promise. Oh, uh, I had the um, both the ESLint config for standard and semi standard, so that's the one, and um, the plugin for the standard. Now, if there is an error, it will show up. Just in case, I can just do npmi. Okay. Um, we'll also add ESLint. Now, the thing with ESLint is, again, this is for us to um, do some linting. A uh, linting is where it checks the the syntax or like um, it checks your code and see if it follows certain rules. And given that, we'll also add um, uh, a configuration for ESLint, which is called ESLint RC. ESLint RC allows us to have this which is a JSON file or a JavaScript object notation file. Um, we'll have an extends which uses semi-standard. And again, the parser is the same. Parser is um, 
bubble parser. There you go. And actually, we can follow that plugins from here. And yeah, for now, we'll, we'll do that. So if we install again, now for coding, I'm um, having some form of like um, coding standard. We will also add um, some Babel RC uh, or yeah, a configuration for Babel RC. So again, another set of configurations. We will have presets. So this is an array of array which has um, Babel preset n. Now um, for these things, um, we're just sort of copying the notes that I have. Um, these things are have already ha have already been tested. It's something that um, in essence. Um, something that I have been work uh, I have worked on for years already. So, um, if you want to do a deep dive um, of it, um, you can do so. But it just so like for this one where we're adding like plugin proposal decorators for uh, uh, allows us to. Uh, um, do decorators which we will show later on when um we go to the front end we will go back into this but we're, we're just preparing this so that um you don't need to set them up later so the next is for class properties um because we can add properties on classes using this oh sorry this should be here um what it means is that this one doesn't need options while this one needs options so that's that's why it's um, within an array so for transform runtime this is for the purpose of having helpers and generators being added on um being added on the front end usually all of these are front end related stuff um, so the last that we will add is this one uh, this one allows us to have the object uh, notation uh, I, I mean object spread uh, notation which we will I will show later so use built in built built in okay so given that of course you'll need to install these things so we can do this 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 and this So once that is done, um, I think uh, we have added, of course, the several dependencies, dev dependencies. We have already added semi-standard. We have already added npm init. Uh, given that, um, um, we'll add them all. Uh, and then commit our work. So um, chore uh, create a, uh, create um, new no this is not new um, added items in the 
uh, added items in the development. So we have added items, um, development items, uh, or added development um, dev dependencies. So git push. So once we have pushed, um, we will look into this on the branch uh, you can see that the development is connected to this branch so set up our code base um, compare and pull request and then that's the added dev dependencies so we can add like a description um, added uh, dev dependencies to allow us um, to have a smoother coding experience yeah. so create pull request and let's say uh, someone else will check your code okay that is good we just merge um, because I'm also the owner of this so merge pull request confirm merge and we uh, we will see already that it is already merged we can delete the branch if we check it here git fetch um git fetch uh uh git checkout main uh we you'll see that there's the files that we have done is gone but if we do a git pull it's back here again so that is um, our first step and we'll go to the next step uh, after so after this.